Yeah, do you know why you're you fighting me? Because no one else wants to fight me. You've I been put in a you. corner, mate. You know I asked for you? I want to be the best in the world at the end of the day. I will smash my fist straight through his head. Boom! Why are you scared? You're scared of what? You're scared. Come and stay face to face. Oh, oh, oh look at you. Welcome look everyone you on the free tournament press conference before Octagon uh, 55 in Birmingham. We are right now in Stuttgart because Octagon is organizing tomorrow a uh, big tournament here in this city. It's Octagon 55. Uh, so you are more than welcome to watch this tournament. But now uh, we invite you all to uh, ask questions. Uh, these fighters around us, we announced the fight card for Birmingham a couple of days ago. Amazing fights are waiting on us. And it's so exciting. So we know that you have all uh, a lot of interesting questions on them so you can use this moment for it and also there's more uh, fights that we will continue with the media day in next weeks also in Birmingham but let's use this opportunity to ask your questions first question for Stefano before the press conference started you lent over to Sherm you said wait till fight night that sort of indicates to me that this is a very real rivalry and it's not just for TV Nah, Shim just likes to talk, innit? But we'll change his mind on the day. No, you were talking online, and now we're here, lad. You're standing at the floor, mate. Hey, I'm fighting you. I signed a contract. Yeah, do just you know wait. why you're fighting me? Because no one else wants to fight me. You've I been put in you. a corner, mate. You know I asked for you. Everyone here knows I bring a good skill set, so let's just wait till April the 20th, and uh, we'll blaze it. Akon, the last time you had a press conference, your Jaffa Cakes caused a bit of a havoc. Uh, have you brought Jaffa Cakes today? No, I haven't, because uh, I don't want to eat them all. I'm about to well, enter into the last stage of my camp, where I like to bring my weight down, obviously, so we can make weight, and then step in there and unleash the force. And the Jaffa Cakes will be bounced off Reza's head. Not you, not you. You're, you're the good one. But it'll be bounced off his head later on. Hey, last time Reza's head was bounced off your fucking nose, Why are mate? you talking, bro? Why are you talking? Listen, listen. Go on. Last time. What happened? You all bark, no bite. What are you talking yeah. about? What I'm talking about. You Me say, all okay, bark, let's no fight. Bite. Let's fight, let's fight. Yeah, I don't want to shake hands with Saraj because he's going to take food from no, no. my table, yeah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. And then yeah. you get dessert also. Then and I what get the what dessert? Happened? dessert. And what dessert. the fuck happened? Listen, who canceled what? the fight? What do you mean you cancel the fight? You, you fucking cancel the fight. Did. You're lucky the fight's on. No, what do you mean? Bro, what you you're talking? lucky the fight's on because that was me and now my corner attacked you. I wouldn't even be here. We all know listen, this. We listen, all know this. Listen, bro. okay. So, okay, so what, ha what, ha what happened? The, the after. fight's still what happened? No, no, what happened on. after? 20th of April. Shem, you obviously have quite a close relationship with both of these two guys. They've got a grudge. What's your opinion on this fight if they were to ever get in the cage together? Um, Obviously, if Dennis and Akon did fight each other, it'd be between them two. But that being said, Dennis is me mate. I'm, I'm going to be team Dennis no matter who he fights in, in Octagon. Like, he's me boy, isn't it? But i got no problem with Akon. I'm cool with Akon. If they want to fight, they've got the same manager and he's sitting right over there. I'm sure he can make that happen. So I saw you on Twitter the other day. You posted a, like, Laura Driver posting a picture of yourself uh, in Birmingham on a poster. Do you give yourself a chance to look back and wh wh where you come from? Or even though you're young in your career, do you give yourself a chance to look back where you come from? Lad, you know what? I'm one of these people, lad. I don't celebrate no wins. I don't take no days off. I'm, you can ask anyone who knows me, lad. I'm, I'm in the gym the day after the fight. I'm in the gym on Christmas. I'm in the gym on my birthday, New Year, whatever. But I can't lie and say that I didn't stop for a second when I seen that picture. And I even messaged Pavel and said like that, that made me day. To, to see like where I've come from. The wanted posters on the screens and now you're seeing the fight posters up on the screen. It is mad and it wouldn't have happened without obviously the big bosses here who made it happen and put me up there. I seen they put Icon on there as well, his one was sick. Um, but I've got bigger things to achieve so I'm not here to dwell on that and be like, oh yeah, I've made it. I'm 10% of where I want to be. I'm still looking up. And you're definitely going to see bigger and better things in the future. We'll see on the day, Who have you it? fought, lad, in your career? I'm going to take you down and elbow you, bro. You won't. You're see. You look, you won't take me down Just wait. once. Just wait, you will bro. never take me down. Just wait. Yeah. Just wait for the day, innit? Yeah. Lad, you got took down by Soroki? Just wait or for the day, Or did you pull man. guard? 
Just wait for the day, man. Were you on your back again, Salaki? On one week's notice. Just wait. Lad, for the you were on your back like a brass. Just wait for the day, man. Yeah. Three rounds with the journey, man, lad. You couldn't go one round with me. Bro, you're 30 years old, man. So what? I'm in better shape old. than you when I'm 30, bro. Look at you, lad. That. I don't know about that, man. Lad, I don't know about that. I you know look that. 40. No, I don't. No, I don't. You do look Frim at you. Frimpong looks 40, mate. Nah, they give you that me. one of those, like. Frimpong looks 40. <laughs> Frimpong has had a hard fucking life. Hey, Come to on, be man. fair, Let's I be do real. look 40, like. But you know what? Some of us had a hard life, not like that little nerdy virgin over there. Yeah, you've had an easy life. Relax. So one final one for Sham. This is uh, this fight's at catchweight. Where do you see your f your future in octagon? Do you see is this a step first step back to featherweight? Um, yeah, 68 kilo used to be catchweight, but it's actually a weight class now. They're calling it Shem weight. Um, the bosses have made me my own weight class. We're gonna make a belt soon as well. Uh, nah, only messing. <laughs> um, I'm I'm doing 68, and then next will be 66. Um, I do want to stay active. If I make 66 at this fight, I don't think I could go again for another few months. So if I make 68, I can do 66 if these want me to go again. Maybe on the Eden card, lads, I don't know. Let, but let, let me put this man in a split first. I'm not looking past Catacoli, even though his skill set is terrible. I see myself as a favourite in every fight I'm in. Do you know what I mean? Regardless of what other people think or the bookies or anyone else. But... Uh, I hope I'm not the favourite on the bookies because then all my mates can make a bit of money again. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, he's, he's had like three, pro, three, four pro fights before I even made my amateur debut. But within that time, I've garnered over two hours of cage time. So I think I've been in there with tougher opponents, you know, between the challenge, the octagon challenge, between my amateur fights, between my pro fights. I've been in there with more legitimate guys. I've been battle tested, do you know what I mean? Where I feel like... When it's come to the real challenges, he hasn't performed on the night. When it came to Jakob Dona, when it came to Roman Paulus, he didn't perform on the night. Um, and granted, those were at featherweight, but I'm a lightweight, so he's coming up a weight division and up a skill set to, to fight me. And uh, I don't think it's going to be a good night for him. I feel like he's a good opponent for me. He's, uh, he's all over Octagon. He's like the first of Octagon at the minute. He's bringing a lot of hype and bringing the entertainment so yeah I'm just looking forward to challenging myself against him uh, one, one final question for the British and Irish guys uh, the Octagon show in Birmingham is a, almost like a showcase of the British talent that Octagon have do you, do you guys see it as an opportunity not just to win but to, perform, to put on a showing we'll start with Liam yeah it's obviously big big platform big show so yeah it's just, just another opportunity to show our skills on a, on a big stage so Yeah, I agree with him as well. And uh, like me and Dennis are both from, well, we're both training in England, so a lot of people will be getting behind the fight as well. So it should be entertaining for the fans. Yeah, so first of all, yeah, there's not just British talent on this, there's Irish talent as well, yeah. So myself and Will, and technically Shem as well, yeah, we're flying a tricolour, we're not flying the Union Jack. But yeah, uh, it's good to showcase a talent that's in the region of the Isles. Um, you know, we're the furthest west in Europe other than maybe Iceland. Um, and yeah, we're going to come showcase our skills. Hopefully showcase enough of our skills that we get a card going in Ireland at some point, maybe Belfast or Dublin. But Dublin. Hopefully Dublin, but we'll, we'll settle for Belfast. Yeah, thanks guys. I want to be the best in the world at the end of the day. So if I can't even be, you know, the best in the UK or the best in the Czech Republic, then I can't be the best in the world, can I? Because... There's other guys out there as well. So, yeah, that's that's the reason I want to just come out there and test myself. Don't really have time to be wasting. The last time I made 66 was, what, four years ago in 2020? I'm a big cunt, what can I say? Um, to make featherweight more than two, three times a year is going to be taxing on my body. But I can make featherweight. And you'll see when I get in there, I'm probably going to be the biggest featherweight on the roster. That I am massive. Um, I look at the featherweight roster and just see like a lot of people who don't want to fight me lad I don't know maybe people are on holiday at this time of the year don't know like Samuel Bark said it himself he doesn't want to fight me he, he DM me I don't know what's going on he's the number one contender like the champ's tied up so I understand he's doing what he's doing but I'm looking at the top I'm looking at the top five I want the best guys in the division I want the fights that are going to excite the fans and hopefully 
UK scene. It's me versus Catacoli, Liverpool versus London. Hopefully the UK fans will get behind that one. But I'm half looking past him. He's not on my level. Serious. Next question for Frimpong. Some say you're all talk and no action. How do you plan to silence the haters and show that you are the real deal in in the next Octagon event? Um, the last guy that called me a keyboard warrior got sent back to the B-Leagues. So, what else, gonna, what else can I say about that? This guy is probably going to get sent back to the B-Leagues as well. And about Birmingham, just what I think, and about England, it's like you have to build it up. Uh, like This country is uh, not easy for us. Uh, everything is different and we're just trying to fight through because we believe that, as we said always with Paolo, that not us, you know, well, it's not because of us and about our mentality and about what we want to achieve. It's also part of this journey. But the main journey for us is to bring the best possible European MMA to European fans in daytime zone, in their homes, in their cities. There was a talk that it, is, it isn't certain, that it wasn't certain that you are still going on with Octagon. Why did you eventually decide to go on with Octagon and fighting here? Do you mean after Manchester? After Manchester, yeah. Yeah, um, it was just one of those things. Um, end of the contract, I changed management. Then obviously my manager had to speak to the bosses and it was just one of them in the process. Um, look, like what these were saying before, look at all of the shows in the UK, in Europe. Why would I not want to be here? Where else would I want to be in Europe? It, it, it doesn't make any, any sense to be anywhere other than here for me. So obviously in the end, we got the deal done and everyone's happy and the fans are happy. So now all I've got to do is back it up in Birmingham. If I lose in Birmingham, then fucking hell. I'm in trouble here, aren't I? But I can't lose to that fella over there. Have you seen him? Do you feel under pressure? Um, having having the whole scene on your shoulders, maybe? Do you know what, mate? The one fight that I didn't feel any pressure was the fight that I lost against Nathan Kelly. Every other fight, when my back's against the wall, when I'm in em enemy territory, when I'm getting booed by the fans, that's what motivates me. I want more pressure. Almost when I'm in the Jan Malik fight, I was slapping my legs like, get nervous, get nervous, because I want that pressure. That pressure is what makes me perform. I want the butterflies, I want the nervousness, because that's what makes me go into kill mode. If I'm in there, laxy daisy, no pressure. It's hard to pull the trigger. So what you're saying with all the pressure on my shoulders, I welcome it, lad. I want more. I, I, I want the main event spots. I want the biggest names. I want the titles. The whoever's got whoever. That is what is going to make me perform on the day. And if I go out there and perform the best I can and lose, I'll still be happy. I'll still hold me head high. Because for me, it's about performing at the highest level in here. And as long as I can do that, I don't care what anyone's got to say about me. Do you look back at Pokorny fight and the Pokorny, uh, the clash, the attack? Do you, do you think you've crossed the line there? And do, you, do you think I crossed the line when he was chatting about my mum, lad? He started it. So, look, I've say, I've, I'll say it, and I've, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I'm okay with everyone, bro. Like, I get it. You've got to sell yourself. You've got to promote yourself. I'm a bit of the A side, so you want to come up to my level. But, you know, when you start crossing lines, like doing little burglar shouts and that, that's when I take it personal, bro. And that's when I'm not asked about crossing lines. You want to get dirty, lad, I'll get dirty as well. And if he wants to sit there and fucking say shit about me mum, lad... I'm not a knobhead. When I see you in real life, it's a real life problem for you. But if you just want to sell the fight, you want to call me shit, you want to attack me skill set, cool, say what you want to say. But there's lines like I'm saying, lad. And once a line's crossed, lad, I don't feel no animosity for no one. I don't feel no hard feelings, no. But I'll cross the line also, bro. I will translate your question. So, yeah, first time in England. Uh, I'm looking forward to fight in Birmingham, you know, I never was in England, you know, I was in the Turkey, all-inclusive hotel, Egypt and this stuff, but no, in England, yeah, yeah great. We will see, I, I heard that in England is weather shitty, but we will see. Yeah, my, I'm looking forward, you know, my opponent is great, 
He's look at him. He's big. He's like strong man. I come to the room. I saw him and I was like, fuck. Why I signed the contract? You know. <laughs> Uh, he's a real sportsman, he has tough opponents like me, so I think it will be a great war. I uh, respect him, yeah, so I think we put a big show with him. You know, Lyon have a, a last fight with Gogoladze. Gogoladze is one of the top five welterweight here. Uh, I have uh, my last opponent, Stolze, the UFC guy, so, you know, we fight with the best and I think we put big show. So I'm looking forward to maybe you have some all-inclusive too in Great Britain or something. <laughs> Not good ones. Not good ones. Good ones. Okay, okay. So we will see. Why hasn't no one asked him no more questions? He's a lady. <laughs> this is arguably one of the most explosive collisions on the card. What's your mindset going into this collision with Shem? Terrified. <laughs> nah, it's a good it's a good opportunity. Like I'm happy to have the fight and stuff. And uh happy to shut this guy's mouth, you know? I was on the challenge with Brad, and now I'm fighting one of his B-League fighters. Uh, all of his best guys were busy, so he sent this guy. Um, Brad didn't want to fly out with him, so he sent some Johnny No Man with him. But um, Brad knows my skill sets. I've, I've grappled with Brad. Brad's probably told him as well, like, whatever you do, stay off the floor with this cunt because he'll choke you. But um, I love Brad. Brad's a legend of MMA. I'll have no bad words said about Bradley. Um, but this man's not Bradley, so I'll slag him. Andre, uh, another one from Aaron East with MMA UK. With such a huge influx of UK-based talent, do you relish the chance to collide with this new addition, Liam? Yeah, yeah, we will see because uh, I know that uh, Liam have some pause, you know, he don't fight so much, but uh, right now he's come back, like I said, with Gogoladze. So uh, right now, I know, uh, for, I, I will not say that for me it's easy money, no, no, of course, he's a big sportsman, you know, but uh, I have a doubt as opponents here. You know, Kai Brito, former champ, Christian Jungwirth, uh, Glissman was uh, number 50 or 60 in the world. So I used to fight these guys. So for me, it's just a big chance to promote myself in the UK, you know, in Ireland and this island and United Kingdom of United Kingdoms, you know, so it's a big change for me. The fans can expect uh, a performance from start, in the fight and at the end, Jeff Gates is going to be thrown. Jeez. I hope it shouldn't, you know, I think he'll make weight, you know, he doesn't look like he uh, ballooned up too much and stuff, so I have no no worries about that at all, I just hope he comes in there with the best guy, the best version of himself and I'll shut that down and then we can shake hands after and I'll say, I told you so. Um, do you know what, I'm a bit weird lad, like, I just want the big fights that the fans are going to get behind and like, obviously the champion at featherweight is Keita. He's a big name. If I could fight him, it'd be big. But let's say if Cater wasn't champion and Samuel Bach was champion, for instance, I'd rather fight Cater because he's a, he's a bigger draw. I'm just here for the big fights, the big draws. Now I can kind of bounce between 66 to 70. Whoever the big names are who are going to sell fights, that's who I want to fight. Like, no disrespect to anyone, but every fight that I'm in, it's, I'm always the, the A side. I want to be... The, 50-50 or the B-side a little bit, you get me? But um, whoever, the bosses want me to fight as well. At the end of the day, they're in charge, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm here to fight, I'm a prize fighter. Just pay me and I'll show up. This 68 one's like the feel-out process to go to 66. Um, obviously, this is all talk. I've got to step on the scale first and do it. So we'll see after April 20th. Uh question for Dennis. Uh, well, first of all, welcome to Germany. There's a lot of German lightweights in Octagon. Are there any you would like to get your hands on? Uh, there's a, I think everyone knows there's a few German lightweights I want to fight, but I want to fight them in Germany. I want to get that boo energy, you know what I mean? I want to feel that ooh, you know what I mean, when I walk out. And I have a little, uh, I actually like some German music, so I'm going to walk out to some German music as well, and I'm sure you'll all enjoy that. What kind of German music you like? <laughs> it's a surprise. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see. When, we'll see when we when we book the fight. And Dennis, you mentioned wanting to get five fights in a year. Would you look at then maybe the Frankfurt card? I know that that's very short notice. If something were to come up and you were you didn't balloon up right away, you know you could squeeze in there. Yeah, I'm planning to stay. Um, Stay active, as I said, I'm not, I'm not going to be ballooning up. I've had a word with my nutritionist, so uh, I had my little holiday in Tenerife before this camp. I ballooned up then, so uh, 
I'm staying focused and uh, set on the mission to take out a few few of these top 10 guys now. If they stop ducking me, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, I, I'll, I'll fight them, but they have to accept the fight with me, you know? You have one of these little Muppets trying to fight me out there in the hallway when there's like 50 people around because he knows that, you know, people are going to break it up. There's going to be maximum two punches thrown, you know? Unlike Akon, I'm not going to cry and be a victim about it. But I want to get him when there's just me, him, and the referee. And the only time I'm going to get pulled off him is when I'm punching his head into the canvas. So he has to accept the fight, as do all the other people. Question for uh, Shem. Training at Next Gen MMA with all the talent that is there across all different MMA promotions, what is it like being in there every day with these like world champion level fighters? Lad, you know what? It's mad because you've got to think, I was away from Liverpool for, what was it, 10 years? So I was watching these people who I now train with, like almost looking up to them. I've been watching Paddy from the come up. I've been watching Molly from the come up. I've been a fan of Luke Riley for a good while, Nathan Fletcher, Adam Cullen, and then eventually got to come home and train with them all. Yeah, I just want to start by saying uh, thank you, Octagon, for the press conference. And thank you to all the fighters. It's been a great press conference. But I just got one for Akon. Uh, other than using the force to make uh, Siraj quit in the Octagon, how will you be looking to finish him? I will smash my fist straight through his head. Boom! And just a quick question. Uh, with the Jaffa Cake stuff, will there be any Jaffa Cakes left over for his corpse? <laughs> <laughs> I bought an extra spare box, one just for Reza, and maybe I'll give uh, I'll give Shiraz a couple after. But maybe I'll bring you a box. You seem like you're looking. You're asking I'd for. I really one. appreciate it. Yeah, 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 thank you. I got you, man. I got you. Okay, so that was it. Thank you, guys. And now we do the step downs. The Vagabond versus the bad boy, Etaba versus Kalashnik. Next up, we bring together Callum Mullen and Dennis the Menace Frimpong. April 20th, this goes down lightweight contest. Dennis the Menace Frimpong versus Callum Mullen. Next up, welcome the ghost Stefano Catacoli and Shem Rock. Don't worry, I'm not kicking. I'm saving that for the fight. Liverpool versus London in Birmingham. Shamrock, Stefano, Catacoli. Now bringing together in the Tip Sport Game Changer quarterfinals the Jedi Akon Wanless and Sahil Siraj. What are you talking about? Why are you scared? You're scared of what? You're scared. Come and stay face to face. Oh, oh, oh look, look at you. Look, look at you. You touch him. You touch him. to see who progresses in the tip sport game changer. Akon Wanless, Sahil Siraj. All goes down April 20th. Tickets at theticketfactory.com. <laughs> 